Pixelmator Pro just dropped a big new version with some features that are focused specifically on professional skin retouching. And they're really great, especially if you've seen the equivalent in other products, this implementation is way better. Let me show you how to use these tools the old way, the new way, and combine the two worlds together to make something amazing. This old way of doing skin retouching starts the same as all of the others. We're gonna use the healing brush to do what it's best at, which is clean up some of the little spots on the skin. From there, we're gonna duplicate the base layer three times. And yes, this is tedious. That's why this is the old way, but I'm showing it to you because there's actually a valuable lesson here and to show off how much cleaner the new way of doing it is. So stick with me here. After I hide the top layer, I just wanna zoom in here and show you what it is we're trying to smooth out. You can see it's nothing crazy. Everybody on their skin has texture. They have these micro hairs. And we're just gonna smooth those out to get that professional magazine cover look. Now, you might think, well, I can smooth this out by just grabbing a Gaussian blur and cranking it up. And you would not be wrong, but there's an issue. You lose the texture of the skin. It starts to look airbrushed. The solution to this is here in our top layer. We're gonna use something called a high pass filter. What it does is it lets the high frequency or the little tiny noisy areas of an image pass through and it hides the rest of it. Now you can tell by what it's doing here, it's not intended to be used as is. You're supposed to use it with one of the lighting blending modes. So you can reproject this texture back onto something. So then what you have between these two layers is one controlling the smoothness of the color underneath and the tone, and the other controlling the texture. If you group them and apply a mask, you end up with something that you can paint in the smoothness to the isolated areas so that the overall image doesn't look blurry. From there, we're free to tune the Gaussian blur or the high pass filter to get just the right look. And this works, but it's just a little clunky. There is a better way. On this second image, you can see I've got my layers set up very similarly. I've just hidden the high pass layer so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, instead of applying a Gaussian blur, I'm gonna use one of the new filters, which is the low pass filter. Now, low pass, like high pass, is not meant to be used as is, and it does the opposite of the high pass. So it lets the lower frequency textures through. Now I'm gonna apply this using an overlay and you can see as I dial this up and down, it smooths things out, but not quite the same way the Gaussian blur does. It's more targeted in the textures that it hides and the ones that it lets through. And so now that I've picked which low frequencies I want to pass through, I can come back over and enable my high pass to choose which of the high frequencies I allow to pass through. And with these two combined, you get this really natural looking smooth skin. It doesn't look airbrushed the way the old method did. And between these two layers, I can dial in the high and the low frequencies, and I can change the lighting blend modes to control how they project onto the layer below. But here's the great thing. In this latest version, there is an even better way still. Now, before I show you the final, and in my opinion, the best way to use these new features, if you found these videos useful, please go ahead and throw me a like and subscribe. Your support means the world to me and it makes all the difference for this channel. Thanks. In this final example, I've picked a photo that gives us a little bit more opportunity to show off the retouching tools. I'm gonna start the same way as all the others by cleaning up some of the larger spots just using the healing brush. Then I'm going to apply another new effect. This new effect is called frequency separation and it basically takes everything that we just struggled to do to combine all of these layers with different blend modes into a single effect with two little sliders where I can dial in the high pass and the low pass. I like to start by looking at the texture that I'm trying to smooth out and doing the low pass first, just so I can see how much it's actually getting smoothed. Then after I'm happy with the amount of smoothness, then I can play with the high pass to bring back in the amount of texture I want until I feel like it's looking natural, but not distracting. And you can see if I toggle this on and off, just how much work this filter is doing for me. And here's the great thing, a couple versions back, Pixelmator added this feature called effects layers. So I don't have to apply the effect directly to the image. I can apply it separately, get the same result, 
and then do some tuning in the middle. Sort of similar how in that first example we were using a layer to apply a Gaussian blur, I can use different methods to mask and smooth out the color in between the image and the frequency separation effect. Let me give you a concrete example of what I mean. I can introduce a new layer and use the color blend mode. I can use that to address the redness around the nose and the bottom of the cheek. Now the blend mode of color makes it so I can paint in color and because I have the original image below and the frequency separation effect above, I keep all of the things I've done to maintain the right amount of texture in the skin. It can be a little tricky to find the right colors to paint in, so I like clicking around the image, sampling different colors, and trying them out until I find stuff that looks natural, and then leaning in on some of my experience with human anatomy and knowing that the cheeks tend to be a little rosier and the nose tends to be a little bit rosier, and finding something that looks natural and subtle. And the result you can get with only a couple minutes of toying around is really impressive and again hopefully highlights the power of what these new effects in Pixelmator Pro allow you to do in the skin retouching area. That's it for this one. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, make sure to follow along for future videos. I'm working on things for Photomator, ways to replace Lightroom, and I'm toying with some things in GarageBand, audio recording, and even some animation. So stick around for those. And if you're new to Pixelmator, check out my back catalog of Pixelmator videos. I've got a lot of tutorials showing you how to use some of the amazing features this product has. All right, thanks. We'll catch you on the next one.